out? So let's start with real hot potato. Do you believe in Obamacare? Yes, we will tackle that hot potato in example three. So um, we're going to study 90% confidence levels. Example one, we'll look at a million marbles. Example two, we'll look at a survey about raises for workers. Uh, nine, uh, example three, we'll look at Obamacare. And example four, we're going to explore um, what happens when your sample size gets bigger to the cost of the polling and the different two types of margin of errors, right? So example one, um, we'll, we'll just start off by, by saying, you know, for there are different types of confidence intervals other than 95%. You could have 99% confidence level, 90%, 85%, 80%, and so on. We'll just look at one other type, a 90% confident level, which is this equation. And instead of 100 over root n, it's just 82 over root n. So that's the only real change. And it simply means if we conducted the poll 100 times, we would expect 90 of those sample results to be within m percent of the true true percentage, right? So I want you to imagine a container full of a million marbles. Some are red, some are blue. We got red marbles and blue marbles, right? We want to know the percentage of red marbles in the container. It would take a long time to count all of the marbles and it would be expensive to pay someone else to do it. Uh, how large of a sample should we take to get a good estimate of the percentage of red marbles? So let's say the actual percentage is 70%. You're not supposed to know that, right? So we're actually trying to find that. How much close do, do, do we get to the population percentage as the sample size increases, right? So let's say we pull out 100 marbles, right? What would you expect the, the colors to be? So, so let's say, first of all, what, what, what would you expect to get? If you pulled 100 ramble mar random marbles, you would expect how many of them to be red? Well, you might expect 70 to be red, but it's hard to get exactly that right, isn't it? We know 70% are red for sure. We're not supposed to know that. But um, if you pull 100 marbles from this container, you'd expect about 70 of them to be red, especially if they're mixed up properly. Um, but it could be 60, or it could be 80, right? Or it could be 65, or it could be 85. It'd be kind of, uh, or 75, or whatever. It'd be kind of fu funny if you got exactly 70. You wouldn't expect to get exactly, but you need you expect to get around 70, right? But what do we mean by around 70? Well, we'll use this, this magic little formula here, and our sample size is 100, and if you plug that into this formula, you get 82 over the square root of 100, which is 82 over 10, which is 8.2, right? Or about eight. Um, and if we do this, um, uh, 70 plus 8.2 equals what? 78.2, right? And then if we go 70 minus 8.2, what's that? That is about 62, or at 61.8, right? So 61.8 is about here, uh, 78.2 is about here, right? So if we just take this interval this is our 90% confidence interval. What does that mean? Right. So it goes from about 62 to 78. This is our 90% confidence interval. Uh, there's a 90% chance that the mean, the, the, the actual percentage of red marbles lies between 62 and 78. Right, that's what it means. Okay, so um, so that's our ninety percent confidence uh, interval. Right. Um, and 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 this is kind of a, a again a bit of a silly example. I mean, th this is kind of assuming that that you did actually get you pull a hundred and you actually got exactly seventy uh, marbles that were red and. Then we can then assert that the 90% confidence interval, confidence interval is between about 62 and 78, right? Um, and just for a comparison, that the 95% confidence interval would be a little little wider. See, for 95% uh, confidence, if you remember, it was 
m is approximately 100 over root n, so that would be 100 over root 100 or 100 over 10 or 10, okay? And so the 90% confidence interval, 95% would have gone from 80 to uh, 60, right? Right, so 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 what, I, what I'm saying is if you pull 100 marbles, 70 exactly were red, then you could assert with 95% confidence that the, the actual um, population percentage is between 60 and 80, right? So I guess what we're, one thing that strikes me, and I hope it might strike you, is that look, this sample size of 100, yeah, it's not very good really, is it? I mean, we want a bigger sample size if we really want to figure out a be better estimate. I mean, if you're, if you're okay with that, 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 that uh, margin of error, well, that's fine. But um, we might want a better estimate for the mean. And so let's see what happens in a formula when our sample size is 500, okay? So we're gonna calculate the margin of error for the 90% confidence interval, 82 over the square root of 500 now. So plug that in your calculator, what do you get? Okay, so uh, 3.66, so about 3.7 approximately, right? And so again, bit of a silly example. Imagine that that we, we pulled, uh, we, we sampled 500 marbles, you know, exactly 70% of them or um, three, 350, what wouldn't that be? Yeah, 350 of them were red. And, 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 and then we count, okay, that's 70%. So, so again, imagine that 70% of them happen to be um, red. And how confident are we that we're, how, how, how confident are we that we've, we've got closer to the um, actual population? Well, do this, 70 plus 3.7 is 73.7, or almost 74. And 70 minus 3.7 is about 66, 66.3 um, in fact, but about 66, so about there, right? So now, this is our 90% confidence interval, right? So as the sample size gets bigger, uh, obviously, I, I hope it makes sense that we're we're now uh, more confident that we're we're getting closer to the to the population mean. Now we can say, okay, the the population mean is between about sixty six and seventy four, right? So so if if we're happy enough with that, then we're, we'll say, okay, fine, and move on. But if we're not happy, we might have to take a bigger sample. Okay, so that's how a lot of things work. You just keep taking bigger samples. Um, if you know, it, it depends on what you're measuring, right? If you want to be more exact to the population, you've got to take a bigger sample, but that takes time, and and time is money. So, but anyway, um, if we took a sample size of 2,000, what would happen? Our margin of error would be 82 over the square root of 2,000. Okay. which is about 1.8, about 2. Um, so 70 uh, plus 1.8 is 71.8. 70 minus 1.8 is about 68, or 68.2, you know. Um, so about from here to here. Okay, so now the confidence interval has shrunken even smaller, right? Here's our new 90% confidence interval. Confidence interval, right? Um, so as the sample size gets bigger, the confidence interval gets smaller, the margin of error gets smaller. The margin of error becomes closer to the um, population. Um, what size of a sample do we need to get um, exactly there. Well, 
the n would have to actually go to infinity for this equation to for the for the margin of error to be finally get to zero, wouldn't it? Because m equals eighty two over square root of n, and and so if you if you went on and on and you finally picked, and you can't uh, really do this, but if you actually picked a sample that is infinite, then um, anything divided by infinity, and that square root of infinity is infinity, so anything divided by infinity is theoretically zero. So your margin of error would go to zero once your sample size became infinite, or in fact if you just um, counted all of the marbles, you know, a million marbles, well why not, um, if you know nothing better to do. But a lot of times we just, in, in life, and especially with polls and stuff, we just want to take a quick sample, get a, get an idea, get a feel for how things are going, because hey, it could change anyway, and, uh, and um, things change with time. So, um, so there you go. And just to compare, I'll just do one more comparison with the 95% confidence interval. Again, the 95% um, confidence is uh, margin of error was approximately 100 over the square root of n. So let's do 100 over square root of 2,000 and see what that looks like. 100 over square root of 2000 and that is 2.2 uh, 2 about so the 95 percent is about at 72.2 so it's about here it's a little bit further out and 70 minus 2.2 is more like 67.8 so again that's a little bit out right so 95 percent confidence Uh, level is 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 a little bit wider than the ninety percent, isn't it? Because if if you're going to be ninety five, even more confident, then you've got to give more room for for your margin of error, if if that makes sense, right? Um, and so to 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 cap off, what does this mean? Uh, uh, it means that uh, just to explain uh, back back to the you know if if we if we picked lots of samples size 2000 of marbles 90% of them would be between 62 point uh, 68.2 and 71.8% um red okay and um, and so on. If we picked many many samples of 500 marbles, 90% um, of them would be between 66.3 and 73.7 percent red. Um, so, so that's I'm trying to explain with the confidence that, that hopefully that helps explain what confidence level means, and um, yeah. So moving on to an ex a example of a poll. So this survey uh, reported in USA Today on November 15, 2017, shows 52 percent of workers uh, didn't get a raise in the past year. And it asserts that more than half of Americans have not gotten a bump in salary over the past 12 months. And um, the one of the, part, one of the numbers we're going to use here is is that they have uh, 1,009 respondents in their survey. So we're going to use that and and calculate the margin of error and have a look at that. All right. So, what is the approximate margin of error for a 90% confidence level, right? And then for the 90% confidence level, explain in in plain English what we can conclude from this survey. Okay. So, um, the the margin of error is for 90% confidence is 82 over the square root of n. Okay. And we read the article and found that there were 1009 respondents so the sample size was 1009 so plug that in the calculator and see what that turns out to be Two point five eight. I'm just going to say that's approximately two point six. Right, that'll do. Um, about two point six. And now, th and, and by the way, in 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 uh, surveys, as we'll see in a little bit, the uh, margin of error is often written as plus or minus. So plus or minus two point six. Right. 
Um, so plus or minus what? Plus or minus the actual percentage of the, the survey uh, th that you got from the sample itself. So you go, um, you know, 52 plus or minus 2.6 is what we should do, right? And um, what will that give us? 52 plus 2.6. 52 minus 2.6, it'll give us 54.6 and 49.4. And um, for the 90% confidence level, explain in plain English what we can cl conclude from this survey. We can conclude that um, um, we are 90% confident. that the actual population percentage lies between 49.4 and 54.6. Okay, we're confident that the population percentage, the one we're really wanting to know, not just those sample of 1,009 people that we, we called, but the actual population is between these two numbers, okay? So we're 90% confidence that between 49.4% and 54.6% of, of American workers uh, did not get a raise in the past year. Okay? In past year there we go. So we are 90% confident that the actual population percentage lies between these two numbers, right? 52% is just 1,009 that we called. That's just a sample. And so we cannot conclude that uh, we can't make this statement scientifically. More than half of Americans have not gotten a bump in salary over the past 12 months. So USA Today made a scientific error right there. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, and mathematicians love these polls that are just around 50% because we can make this point about the mar margin of error. Anyway, so moving on to example three. Um, so this Gallup poll surveyed 1,023 adults and found 55% approved of the ACA. Here was the question given. Um, and the results are based on telephone interviews conducted on these two days at this particular time. Um, the Look at this. The margin of sampling error is plus or minus four percentage points at the 95% confidence level. And um, we're going to calculate the margin of error for a 90% confidence level, explain what this means, and so on, right? So m is approximately 82 over square root of n, which is 82 over the square root of, and how many people were surveyed? 1,023. So we will find our margin of error to be. Approximately 2.5, approximately 2.6, right? And um, now they found it. it this, is, this is from the uh, Gallup poll. They found plus or plus or minus four percentage points at 95 percent. We're calculating for 90 percent, right? So w the out of those people surveyed, 55 percent approved. Um, and so we go 55 plus or minus 2.6, right? So that's, you know, 55 plus 2.6, 55 minus 2.6, and get those two numbers, right? 57.6 and 55 minus 2.6 is 52.4, okay? So what can we conclude? So calculate the margin of error, we did that. Margin of error is this. Explain in plain English what we conclude from this survey. In other words, explain the confidence interval. So can you do that? Explain in plain English what we can conclude from this survey. 
So we conclude that we're 90% confident that the actual uh, population percent is between these two numbers 52.4 and 57.6 okay that's what we can conclude we're 90 percent confident that the actual number is between this and this this 55 percent is just from our survey that doesn't represent that's not the population the, the population wasn't all they weren't and they didn't ask everybody they just asked those thousand twenty three people right but if this is a good sample if this is representative of the population and not all living in the same town or all exactly, you know, 25 years of age or everyone's exactly uh, 70 years of age or whatever. So if this is a good random sample from that that's representative of the population, um, then we can conclude that the actual percentage of population is between these two numbers. So 9% confident that... Um, between 52.4% and 57.6% of Americans um, approve of the Obamacare, right? Now, um, so please go ahead and calculate the margin error for 95% confidence level. That margin of error was um, 100 over root n. So press pause and do the same thing for the 95% confidence level and see what you get. Okay, I'm going to do it now really quickly. So that's 100 over the square root of 1023. Plug that in the calculator, it should be about 10. Ah. 3.12 so about 3.1 so now we take our polls percentage which is 55 and we add and or subtract 3.1 now 55 plus 3.1 is 58.1 55 minus 3.1 is um, 51.9 so what can we conclude we're 95% confident that the actual number for the population is between this and this, between 51.9, about 52 and 58. We're 95% confident that um, between 51.9% and 58.1% of the population of Americans, American adults, uh, approve of the ACA, right? So, um, and isn't this interesting that we found 3.1 and the, the paper says uh, says four so they're being a little conservative in a way that you know they they're maybe they uh, well, there's a slightly different formula you can use but but they've they've increased it even more they've round it's you know they they've they've increased that margin of error just a little more because what they really want to say what the article is really trying to say is that on this particular date um, the majority and that's the trick majority of Americans approve of AT, a, uh, uh, majority of Americans approve of ACA that's what they're really wanting to get at more than 50 percent because that's what you need in a democracy more than 50 percent that's the magic number isn't it right so let's explore this article just real quick just to see see it just to understand a little bit more about the polling so here's our uh, Obamacare poll of April the 4th, 2017. And what are they looking for in political polls? The majority. What does the majority mean? It means more than 50%. So that's what makes the headlines. Affordable Care Act gains majority approval for first time. See, that's more than 50%. 
uh, is power, right? Uh, and uh, in public opinion, ever since we've moved from feudalism, for example, to democracy, public opinion has meant uh, a lot. So, um, so, and here is the actual question. And so, so let's just go into just a couple of points about polls. Um, if, if I scroll down here, we can show you um, the the little bit of a math part here. It tells you the the random sample. Look at that random sample of 1,023 adults. You don't want them all to be uh, of one party or the other. You don't want them all to be the exact same age or or gender or income or whatever. So that'd be random. And look at this. The sam margin of sampling error is plus or minus four percentage points at the 95% confidence level. And it even goes into a few little details like they got to have a minimum quota of 70% cell phone respondents, 30% landline respondents, just to try to reflect the general population. And you can read about their survey methodology and their, their all, all sorts of uh, things here, right? How the polls work. Um, but the other point on poll, so 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 there's a couple of points, and you know you gotta make sure your sample is is reflective of the population. You gotta be careful about your question. So this is their question: Do you generally approve or disapprove of the 2010 Affordable Care Act signed into law by President Obama that restructured the U.S. healthcare system? So you know there's the the question can depend can change the response slightly as well. Like for example, if you take out President Obama's name from the question um, there might be uh, people that um, that don't like uh, this this person and so they will they will approve uh, if you put it in then, then then they might have disapproved and vice versa there might be people that like this person so they'll approve or they don't and so they disapprove and, and then even this this part like do you generally approve see that generally is a big word if they had said do you completely approve then they get a different response see so so how you ask the question is a big deal and the other thing about political polls and, and and why don't they they survey more people so that their margin of error gets smaller well look at this i mean look how people are changing their mind all the time like this is April 2017, April 20, August 2016, December 2015, you know, April 2013. They're changing their mind like crazy, right? Why are people constantly changing their mind, right? So, so that's why you don't want to be doing your spending a ton of money on big surveys, right? Because people always change their mind anyway. So, so these, you know, political surveys are just like a moment in time, and they say a week is a long time in politics, right?